We've been proud to support PTC Optics cameras for over five years, and now we are excited to announce support for their Generation 3 cameras, specifically the Move SE and the Move 4K models. And this camera bring even more power and flexibility to your setups, including tracking. And we've enhanced our configurations on the PTC controllers to make the most out of it. One of the standard features that you find on our controllers is we can read and write values directly from a camera for a wide range of parameters. And that means greater precision, more control, and a smoother experience overall. And in this video, I'll show you how our integration makes controlling these cameras a breeze. So this is the 4K and this is the SE and this is the PTC Pro. If you have a PTC Fly, if you have a PTC Extreme, PTC View, our other PTC controllers, you can expect much of the same. One of the standout features on PTC Pro and why it's so loved is that it has a lot of direct access on the buttons. This, the purple or pink buttons are preset record buttons and here you have the camera selector and we can see the names of the cameras, which is pretty cool. This is the UI of React, it comes straight out of this. We are um, basically looking at the web UI of this panel. So if I want to go to the camera selector and change the names, I could write SE on this one and 4K on this one, if that was the names that I like to identify them by. And now see the camera selector actually has that in them. Standard feature, use a joystick to move the camera around. So now we're just pointing it over here and I have a web UI for this one. So let's just change over to that and uh, that helps me to just evaluate what I'm doing. There's a little bit of a slower response on the web UI. That's no, not too bad, but anyway. Okay, so one of the things that I, I think when, when we're looking at this, maybe we wanna adjust the image a little bit and um, that's one of the, the, the things that is um, typical on a Skyhawk controller, you can actually do that. So here we have iris priority and I can adjust the iris of the camera by turning this knob. So that's one way to basically relate to the image. Uh, we can also change over to shutter priority instead. So now I can adjust the shutter speed of it and uh, change that one around. All right. Yes, uh, if we look inside this menu, we'll see settings uh, like these, for instance, inside of uh, exposure. You see that we are now in shutter priority mode. We have this shutter speed set. If I change that in the UI, you'll also see it updated just in a moment on the controller itself. There we go. And uh, if I am changing it here, you should actually be able to see it as well in this UI. I'm a little unsure how often they are updating the UI or maybe I need to just um, go away from this tab. But anyway, I have set the, the change. So the two-way communication is not necessarily going the other way because of this UI, but I could probably reload it. Anyway, there's the thing that I want you to see on the controller, and that is if I'm in shutter priority, I see shutter speed right here. But if I go back to iris priority, we put iris here. So we also trying to build a configuration that shows you the relevant parameters. And it's not so relevant to see iris if you can't set it, which is the case in shutter priority. So we show that instead. And the same is actually true. Now we are in manual. So now we see both shutter speed and iris, right? And we have gain over here. And if we go one step further, we have in the auto mode where everything is automatic. This is where we are right now. You have uh, exposure uh, compensation uh, turned on, which means that turning this knob will kind of offset how much the exposure is uh, being offset from its uh, its standard starting point and the gain limit is, is here as well. If we go to the white balance settings, then we have basically the same situation. We are in auto mode right now. We can tune the red and the green. So turning this knob, we should see a change to the, um, the uh, uh, red dimension of the white balancing and I can also tune it in the opposite direction. So now you see there's a slight change in the image. You don't see a whole lot here. So it must be on the uh, very uh, fine grained level. If we are on an indoor white balance, these things are now blocked out. You see a little icon that tells us that they are not accessible. And if we go to outdoor, we have the same. If we go to one push, we have a one push feature. So I can actually press this button and then we'll have white balance uh, evaluated in a single push. You saw that happening right there. We have manual mode. Now we have actual red and blue gain. So if I change these, we should see fairly radical changes to the image as an indication that this uh, red and blue gain adjustment is our manual interaction with the white balance. 
Okay, let's just move on. We have, uh, I think, color temperature here finally. Yes, we can adjust the color temperature, set it to some manual setting. One of the special features we provide is trace, cruise control, and advanced features like that. It's something you need to enable on your controller. So if you press and hold this button, you enter into the mysterious hidden engineering menu. The place you don't want everybody to go, but in here you have like system settings available to you. And one of them is you can enable trace, which will now do. There's also cruise control, expert mode, tally to camera, read about them somewhere else. Today we'll just enable trace and that means we can record a trace for these cameras. I press the button, I hold it, not for one second, but for three seconds and it turns red. So actually now it is recording a trace on this button. So if I move the camera a little to the side, and then I move it back. Actually, I should probably try to do this a little slower so that we have like a nice move. Zoom in. But it's the principle that you are here to see. Basically, okay, let me just pan a little to the side. All right, and zoom out while I am at it. Okay, and let's just stop here. I'll press this button and now that trace, by pressing that button first, it will go to the initial position and then as I press it, notice hands off, it is going to move the camera exactly in that steps that I was just recording. So it's basically replaying the action I did with the joystick. Now you're probably a better joystick operator than I am, so you could make smoother moves than I did, but it's going to be the exact same thing. It's, it's playing back the movements you made with the joystick a moment ago. And that's what Trace is. Now, I wanna show you something which is pretty cool and should probably have been done a moment ago, namely this button. If you press and hold it, it's going to flip the camera selector and the preset selector because it's kind of more useful to have presets shown down here. Why? Because notice this, if I press this one, it says arming and I, it says uh, 21 seconds. And that is exactly the length of the trace I just recorded. And now it's playing back the steps. You see that in the display, it's playing back, it's lighting up green, it is counting down to zero. So that is the length of my trace that I'm now playing back on these cameras. And this is a feature that Skahoy's PDC Pro or PDC Extreme has added to your PDC Optics cameras. Isn't that nice? This is how we roll. We wanna extend your control experience and add like more features to the cameras in this way. All right, we're done with that. I wanna show you how you can also name presets because that's another very cool feature. Inside of this UI, where we also named each of the cameras in this table, it's called a settings table. And in the settings table, we could not only set the name of the camera and we can also set stuff like a tally index. That's if you have it associated with an input source on a video switcher. But the presets button in the far right gives you a chance to name your presets. So we can name these, we could call this one trace. And as we do so, it now says trace, which is cool, right? And then we had some other presets on number, I think number four and five. So we call this like a close up uh, and um, next one would be like wide shot or something like that. And those names are now end ending up in the, in the uh, preset. Uh, selection row here and if I change to the other camera notice that this is now this camera over here and we'll start uh, working with that a little bit as well because in a moment we'll be tracking you right yes so um, with, with this camera we can also record presets and we can have other labels being set so let's just close this down or oh, actually we should have gone back but if I go to presets here on that very first preset and uh, let me just press and hold so we save it yes Casper it's probably Casper that we now see in this preset we can also check it out just real quick here yes Hello there. All right, this is gonna be very difficult. Anyway, we wanna do tracking of me in just a short while, but my name is now in the display. If I change to the other camera, I see the other names. So this is so, so, so cool that you can have labels applied to your presets. It means that more presets can be useful for you instead of having small scribble strips, which by the way, wouldn't make a lot of sense if you have many cameras, but you can do that in the UI of Reactor, which comes straight out of the PDC Pro with no need of a computer in between, only using a web browser to make those changes. Now, let's move on and look at the, uh, no wait, actually there was one more thing that I wanted to show you. And that is a cool little additional thing that is uh, added recently to uh, Reactor here. If you wanna create additional presets, because right now we have like 20 set up. If the camera support more, you can click this button, you can have like a batch selection. So make another 20 presets and you can basically add it um, with a um, starting at, row number 20, and then you can say increment, and it's going to, uh, okay, will it copy this one? No, actually, I think, 
No, I think we should go to the latest uh, row down here. So, okay, starting at this value, and it will make presets number 21 up to 40. Let's just try, create, and you now see that you have additional rows made here where you can have incrementation automatically of the preset ID as we just did. And you can also, of course, you could have copied the alternative labels, but you probably want to do that separately for each camera. With the 4K camera, let's try tracking out. So if we go to the camera, you'll see that inside the control section here, it has something called automation and you can start auto tracking. Now there's a lot of parameters which you can set for the camera, but the important thing is that you can enable and disable tracking from the control panel so that you can always overtake with manual control, but also go back to automatic control and let the camera take care of tracking the subject. Okay, so, um, we will just keep this one open and then we could go through the menu and then when we end up on number U4, the last menu item, if you press this repeatedly, you'll see that it actually offers additional menu items and one of them being auto tracking enabled. So let's just try to turn this one on and then see what the camera does. It seems like it's starting tracking and it gets uh, me as a subject here. It should be possible on this one, subject select, to also choose between different subjects. It is something I have not had the chance to try, and that is probably the two things that is most important for you to have as hardware knobs, and it may also be the only two things that we can actually control using the Visca protocol at this point in time, because this is a, probably a brand new feature, and it is not a standard thing in the Visca protocol. So thank you, PPC Optics, for putting it in, and we can at least work with this. So we have now tracking enabled. I should be able to demonstrate that the camera is tracking me. Yes, it is. And I am also able to turn it off and go back to manual control. You're welcome. So that is the PDC cameras, the third generation, the SE, the 4K, a lot of cool stuff on the PDC Pro, which is even bringing more utility to these cameras with trace, tracking on off, having all the parameters and their true values at your fingertips. To stay in the loop with our latest software and hardware updates, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel, sign up to our newsletters, or connect with us on social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and X. And if you have any questions, our fantastic sales and support team, they are ready to help. All the links you need are in the video description below.